Hi, we're going to make some blueberry pancakes this morning. And I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, wait a minute, blueberries are not low carb. Well, actually they can be. And we're going to use a little trick to give more blueberry flavor than adding the fructose and blueberries. So let's start with almond flour. This is one half cup of almond flour. That's just Honeyville finely ground almond flour. And I'm going to add to that a half cup minus two tablespoons of oat fiber. And the reason I'm using less oat fiber is that oat fiber can give a grainy texture in addition to giving that floury mouthfeel. And it tends to vary by brands. That's a Honeyville brand and it especially gives a grittier feeling that I had not noticed. I actually prefer, um, I think it's New Naturals. It's some that you've ordered from Nutrition just in a plain silver package. I actually like that oat fiber a little bit better. I'm gonna order that next. And then I'm going to add a third cup of whey protein isolate. Now I'm using the Isopure whey protein isolate. Um, this is unflavored. This is actually a vanilla flavor. So it's one third cup of that. I'm using the vanilla because I had it and because pancakes, that will work well, I think. Um, I'm gonna mix all my dry ingredients first. And actually, I forgot, the first thing we need to do, we had some trouble getting the camera set up, so I got a little off my game. But the first thing you wanna do is I have six ounces of heavy cream, and I'm going to add to that two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, and that's the apple cider vinegar with the mother. You wanna do that first, so you should do that before you start doing your dry ingredients. And I'm gonna set that aside. We're essentially making a low carb buttermilk by doing that. Okay, now let's go back to our dry ingredients. A half cup of almond flour, a half cup minus two tablespoons, just a short half cup of oat fiber, and one third cup of whey protein isolate. To our dry ingredients, we're going to add um, a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna get out of order, a quarter teaspoon of salt. We're going to add a half teaspoon of baking powder. This is my baking powder right here. <laughs> it's hard to tell sometimes when I get them into the little containers. After the baking powder, we wanna add a half teaspoon of baking soda. So these are equal parts of baking powder and baking soda. And again, I'm mixing it with my dry ingredients. Um, why do I use both? You know, the baking soda is going to react with the vinegar that we put into the heavy cream. And so that will help give it some rise or lift. And then we're going to add a half teaspoon of glucomonin. Now, with the glucomonin, you wanna mix it well if it comes in with the dry ingredients. If it comes in contact with liquid, it can clump and you don't want that to happen. So I'm going to mix that in as well. Make sure that's mixed so it doesn't clump up on you. If you don't have glucomonin, it's just a thickener. It gives texture. You can also use xanthan gum. Xanthan gum is something that a lot of low-carb households keep on hand. To this, I'm going to add one third cup of granulated sweetener. Now this is sucrin one, so it's a blend of erythritol and stevia. It does not have an aftertaste the way I've noticed with some um, erythritol blends. That is one third cup. If you want it sweeter, you can add more than that. And in fact, I usually add four drops of liquid sweetener to this just to get it a little bit sweeter. Okay. Now, I know I've got a clump there. I'm gonna stir this really well because I don't wanna stir it so much after I add my other ingredients. The last of the ingredients that I'm going to add are eggs, and I have three eggs. And these are just three, whoops. The um, brand I've been buying, the cage-free eggs, often has double yolks. And so I have made this a couple of times, the double yolks. Um, and I never know then, well, should I be using four eggs or three eggs, which is the right thing to do. So I've got my eggs in there. I have two tablespoons of melted butter that I'm going to add. And that's just two tablespoons. It's probably salted butter that I'm using. You can use either, just adjust the salt um, that you're using. And to be honest, I don't remember which I, which I pulled out of the fridge. It's salted butter. Okay. And we're going to give that a mix. And the last thing we're going to add in is the 
buttermilk. Well, actually, we're going to add the sweet, the uh, vanilla and blueberry extract last, but that's after everything's well mixed. You'll see as soon as I put this in, you'll see it start to react, and you'll see little bubbles bubbling up when you have it in your own mixing bowl at home. That just means it's working, and it's going to have some rise. Okay, let's give this a mix. And it's going to be thick. And it will thicken. Now it's going to be thick, not like regular pancake batter. And it will thicken more as it sits over time. Part of that is the oat fiber absorbing the moisture. Um, and, but you don't want to over mix this, okay? Mix it pretty well. I can see some bubbles. I don't know if you can see bubbles in my batter but I can see some bubbles. I've also used this batter as a base for blueberry muffins, and my family loved that. I made a big batch, and they ate on it all week, and so it was really nice for them to be able to pull that out of the fridge in the morning, have it with a couple pieces of bacon or sausage, and they were really happy. All right, that is starting to mingle and talk to itself. Let's add some vanilla. Now what I'm gonna do with this, I'm gonna add a teaspoon of vanilla, and I'm gonna add a half teaspoon of blueberry extract. The vanilla extract, you know I love my vanilla. I get it to everything. And the blueberry, this is Silver Cloud Estates. I actually found this on Amazon. Um, I probably ought to check the ingredient list again. It does have propylene glycol, um, and, and natural flavors, but generally this has been safe and we have used it several times. I'm using a half teaspoon of this. And in fact, when I made this, my husband had asked for blueberry pancakes and he basically looked at me and said, wow, how'd you do this? <laughs> it was one of those looks like, yeah, I'll never leave her now. All right, let's give this a stir. And then I do have fresh blueberries, but I'm not going to add the blueberries to the batter. I'm going to reserve the blueberries. Um, and what I'll do is I get my pan together. I will add some ghee. We're going to fry it in ghee. It's just clarified butter so it doesn't burn. This came from Trader Joe's, so it's not terribly expensive. And then after I get them in the pan, I will take the fresh blueberries and I'll sprinkle just and these have been washed. I'll sprinkle just three or four berries, depending on the size of the pancake, over the top. So you have that great little burst of blue, fresh blueberry, but you're not getting a lot of carbs um, by adding them in. Don't want to add them in the batter because they kind of get lost in there. So I do add them one at a time. Okay, so let's stop here. I'll get the pan ready and we'll fry some of these up. Okay, so our batter's been sitting just a few minutes and we're ready to fry these up. I have to tell you, I am nervous about frying them while I'm talking because you know the first ones never turn out exactly right. All right, let's see if the luck will be with me. I'm using a gravy ladle. Yes, I do know this is a gravy ladle. I'm using that to put the batter in the pan because it just seems to work really well. Um, I'm not making these terribly large. This is a really large skillet that I'm using, but I'm making them maybe three or four inches across. Um, the batter actually it doesn't seem as thick to me, so I'm looking at this going, what did I do wrong? Um, so I don't know, we'll see. Let's add some blueberries. These are great plump blueberries. I found at Aldi's, and I don't know that I have my skillet actually hot enough, so I'm gonna turn it up just a bit. And look at those, these look great. Big blueberries. I'm just putting a few, and it will make the batter scatter just a bit makes the batter scatter. Okay. I probably ought to make a smiley face, right? That's too many blueberries. <laughs> too many carbs. Um, I'm just kind of randomly throwing them in there. There, we have eyes and a nose on that one. Okay. And you, you probably can't see, but there are bubbles coming up, and that's always a really good sign. And again, I think I made these too big, and my pan probably wasn't hot enough. I'm going to turn it up just a hair. It's hard to, to um, get it just right. These um, have a great flavor. I will tell you that 
Um, like I said, I'm using clarified ghee to cook these in. You can use coconut oil, MCT oil. I've heard of people using bacon fat. I've never tried that, believe it or not. Um, and I did add four drops of liquid sucralose because it wasn't quite sweet enough. So let me pause actually here because it's going to take a little while. And then when they're ready to flip, we'll be back. Okay, so these are about ready to flip. I'm so nervous, like my heart is racing. I'm gonna screw this up. But okay, so you'll see the bubbles and you, you may be able to see that they're browning around the edges. This is the first one I put in the pan, I think, but this one looks like it's ready to flip. Um, I'm gonna do just like that and it flipped okay. You really wanna take it slow and easy. You're not gonna flip these um, here. Get the edge out. They're doing okay and they look gorgeous. I turned the heat up maybe a little too much. And hang on. Part of this is getting where you're comfortable with your wrist. Okay. Over like that. Reminds me of flipping a mattress on a bed. Okay. <laughs> and then flip this over. And once you get them flipped, it doesn't take too, too long on the other side. I'm gonna check the heat. Yeah, I turned it up. That's the hardest part. Like by the time you're done, um, like with them, you, the heat is fine. You finally get the heat right and then you're out of batter. These look like they're doing well. And a blueberry pop there. So I've got blueberry juice coming up on the skillet. And let me take a peek. Oh gosh, guys, look at this. That's our blueberry. Now they're gonna leave some blueberry stain on the skillet simply because of the way we did it. Um, the way I put them in there instead of in the batter. If you want to try them in the batter, you can do that. All right, I'm gonna put this stack right here. Man, see there's some fluff there. They've risen a little. Can't wait to try those. I'm gonna put a little more ghee in my pan. And if that blueberry juice starts to um, burn, I can always just take something and wipe out the skillet. We'll put on just a few more. We'll let those cool so I don't burn my mouth <laughs> the way poor Grace did on one of our videos. Okay, and again, you want to make them fairly small. The heat should be better. When I put it in, I don't know if you heard this sizzle, but there was a little sizzle, which is kind of nice. Not going to make these quite as large. They flip easier. And I'll have to calculate the carbs on these. The carbs are going to come primarily from the almond flour. There are 12 total carbs, not net, but total carbs, and a half cup of almond flour. There isn't supposed to be any carb in the um, isopure whey protein. I generally count for a third cup, I might count a carb or two just to be safe. And um, there, I don't count anything for the fiber in the um, oat fiber. So we have eggs that would add some carbs. Eggs are gonna add the three eggs, we'll say two carbs. We'll take a carb for that. So we're up to what? 12, 13, 14. Um, let's be safe and we'll say there's 15 carbs in the whole thing. And again, not counting sugar alcohols for erythritol. Those look really good. All right, so I've got a fork. And I do have my sucrine fiber syrup clear and the silver uh, syrup gold. I don't think this needs syrup, so I'm not even gonna put it on there. Um, let me take a cut of this. Look, if you can see, it's kind of fluffy. Mm -hmm. I think I kind of like these. Mm. Now, I would not eat this whole stack of four. Mm. I probably would eat two of them with some bacon or sausage with some fat. Now, I'm gonna take another bite and you can see kind of how they're stacking up. They're, they're fluffy and they have a really nice flavor, I think. But oftentimes it's not what I think that matters. So let me hand this off to my cameraman. Mm, I just breathed in a blueberry. <laughs> He tends to like the fiber syrup. I'll hand that off to him. And this whole recipe will make over a dozen pancakes. I think I got 16 last time. You can tell I'm doing four per pan, and I probably haven't even used half of the batter. It doesn't need syrup. 
<laughs> they are delicious and you can't ever leave me. <laughs> it's he only loves it before on blueberry pancakes. I hope that if you make these for your family, that they enjoy them as much as mine do. What I'm gonna do with this, by the way, is I'm gonna finish making the batch. I'll put them in a Ziploc bag in the fridge, and then they will warm these up through the week. And so I get to be the hero, not just today, but I get to be a hero through the week because they have fresh homemade blueberry pancakes. Well, it's not fresh, but I made blueberry pancakes every day of the week. I hope that you try these at home and that you like them. Let me know.